if you are a fan of boss rush games and you enjoy a challenge, then Nimbus Fall might be for you. Let me explain what it's about in a few minutes. You face off giant enemies who want to crush you, while you seek revenge and aim to free your people, who are trapped in a mysterious tower filled with huge and nasty monsters. These creatures are there to stop you and your mission. Nimbus Fall is a pixel art boss rush action title where your main task is to fight against giants. You will need to learn their attack patterns, recognize their ability and retreat at the right moment before they strike. You start with just a sword, but as you progress from floor to floor, you can obtain different kind of weapons, including a stick. Each giant has unique abilities and skills, so you have to be somewhat strategic about what to take on these challenges. At the start, you choose the difficulty for your run. What I appreciate is that the difficulty level affects more than just health and damage of the monsters. It also changes other game's elements. First, enemies become more aggressive, attacking more frequently and often combining their attacks into combos. Second, they gain a broader range of attacks, so as the difficulty increase, they will present new challenges, always having a trick you haven't seen before, until you have faced them enough. Finally, the difficulty affects the layout of the tower. Higher difficulty levels mean more enemies to defeat and different tower layouts, although they aren't randomized. After selecting a difficulty level, you will pick a game mode. These modes can further affect the difficulty. For example, you can go full masochist and try to beat the game with just one health point, or choose the easiest mode where you start with 10 health points. For ultimate challenge, there is also a turbo mode. You'd have to be true masochist for this one. In turbo mode, everything moves faster, both you and your enemies. However, I found this mode to be unbalanced. Many enemies attack with projectiles and getting hit stuns your character for half a second. The issue arises when multiple projectiles are shot at you in quick succession, making it nearly impossible to dodge them, which results in taking massive amount of damage, and it just doesn't feel fair. Once you have selected your difficulty, you are ready to begin. You always start with a sword when you face your first boss. Depending on the difficulty, defeating the first boss might be easier or harder, but there are a few core mechanics to be aware of. Your basic controls lets you jump, dash to avoid attacks and perform a standard combo attack. When fighting a giant, you must pay close attention as they usually telegraph the attacks. Before they stomp or a slash, they give you visual or audio cues, so you need to be ready to react. Some attacks come with sounds, while others don't. At the top of the screen you can see the boss health bar and in the middle your own health and rage bar. In addition to basic attacks, you can perform a special attack using your rage, summoning a huge sword that deals significantly more damage than your normal hits. To fill up the rage bar, you need to land several basic attacks. On higher difficulty this is more challenging because your rage depletes if you stop attacking for too long. Each boss has two phases. After reducing a boss health by half, they will freeze for a couple of seconds, then start fighting again. But this time, their attacks are upgraded. More projectiles, longer attack duration or combos with additional moves. However, they aren't invincible. Once you learn their patterns, you will know how to take them down. After defeating a boss, you will enter a mid-section room, where you can choose from several weapons or keep the one you already have. Sometimes the game forces you to pick up a new weapon by blocking your exit until you take it. Then you climb to the next floor and the next boss fight begins. As I mentioned, you can jump, dash, attack and perform a special skill. However, I am not sure if the developer has fully polished the controls. In boss rush games and similarly in souls likes or roguelikes with lots of action, the controls need to be near perfect and highly responsive. In Nimbus Fall, it feels like they fall short, unless it was intentionally designed this way. Typically, in other games, dashing cancel whatever action you are performing, letting you quickly avoid incoming attacks. But here, your character must finish their action before you can dash, which often leads to taking damage unnecessarily. You not only have to master the enemy's movements, but also be cautious with your character's responsiveness. It's more tolerable on lower difficulties, but becomes frustrating on higher levels or in turbo mode. I also don't want to forget about important additional attack. By jumping and holding the down direction while pressing the X button midair, your character performs a powerful ground pound attack, turning into a heavy, fast dropping bell. And what's also important to mention is that you're able to play in local co op mode. I hadn't anybody able to play it, so I didn't try it. And before we're gonna continue, if you'd like to get more videos about less known indie games, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, and let's move on. 
overall, I was happy with how the game worked most of the time. It's not triple A title with a huge budget, so I didn't expect perfection, and I did encounter a few glitches, including one game-breaking bug. It still performs better than many triple A or even quadruple A titles. There is a flying helmet boss that sometimes stops attacking me after entering the second phase, giving me an easy win. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm not a fan of the spider boss, though I have a trouble reading its attack, and the game often glitches during this fight, leading to unclear hits on my character. Unfortunately, the totem boss caused a game-breaking bug for me. The boss can harm you by walking and summoning totems and creatures to attack. But after restarting the game multiple times, my character kept getting hit by invisible attack and eventually the boss became invincible. I'm sure the developer will fix this issue, but for now this really hurt my experience. There is not too much to say about the art style, it's clean and reminiscent of 8-bit titles without modern twist. I appreciate its simplicity, which helps you clearly understand what's happening on the screen. It's not a masterpiece, but it's get the job done. I like how each boss has a room in a different theme related to the boss type. I'm mixed about the sound design though. While I like some soundtracks, especially the magician theme, I feel like certain sound effect needs polishing. Some enemies' attacks have sound cues, while others don't. Since we tend to hear things faster than we see them, having consistent audio cues would help players react more quickly, especially on higher difficulties. For fans of boss rush games, you will be rewarded with trophy icons for defeating bosses on specific difficulties or beating them without taking damage. There is a plenty of challenges to collect, which adds a nice reward for players who took their time facing challenges. If this is developer's first project, I can understand some of the decisions that were made. However, they won't change my opinion of the game. Despite the error I mentioned, I generally enjoy it. The controls were frustrating at times as I expected more responsiveness, especially with the dash which should have allowed for more room for mistakes. I'm not going to lie, the totem boss glitch made me stop playing entirely. The art style is basic but I appreciate its clarity. Some enemies' attacks could be better indicated but overall the game is fun. In its current state it's decent, but as someone who isn't a boss rush enthusiast, I'm sure dedicated fans of this genre will enjoy it more than I did. It's not a bad game but it needs a little bit more love. And it's quite cheap, as the game have full support for controllers, playing it on Steam Deck won't be any problem at all. If you wanna check the game by yourself, like always, I put the link to the Steam page of the game. And if you wanna discover more indie games that you may not know about, then don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye!